you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Uh, I have a number of things to share. By the grace of God, we have two sessions I'll be teaching and just speaking over your life. And the next session will be a miracle session where the Lord will grant us the grace to minister. So to do well to let everyone around you know that God is doing great things even in this conference. I felt stirred in my spirit to share a few principles that have to do with advancement. This is a conference that seeks to push us forward to be able to make progress first in our work with God and then to excel in our kingdom assignments. And I trust that as this word comes, it will bless our hearts. Conferences like this are designed to create the platform for increase, for growth, for impact, to see us move from one level to the other, not just in our spiritual lives, but our finances, our families, our career, etc. So we'll start by considering two very interesting scriptures. First is Deuteronomy chapter 2. Please turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. Very thought-provoking scripture. It says, ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Then it leaves us with an instruction, turn you not words. You have encompassed this level, this realm, this dimension, spiritually, financially, career-wise, family-wise. You have encompassed, you have dwelt around this level for long it says, turn you not words, rise higher, move to a higher pedestal, a higher dimension of kingdom exploits. Very powerful scripture, Deuteronomy 2 and verse 3. The second scripture is 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 12. I have my Bible here and I'll turn very quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6, very interesting scripture. I'm reading from the King James translation, 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 6. Here's what it says. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Listen carefully. Samuel the prophet is speaking to the people. And he's saying, it is the Lord that advanced Moses. It is the Lord that advanced Aaron. That means it is not within the power of men to advance themselves. They can do the best that they know to do intellectually by their connections, but it is the Lord. It takes the Lord himself to cause men to move forward. It is the Lord that advanced Moses advanced Aaron and brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. It is God's desire that we move forward in life. It is God's desire that we make progress in life. Um, growth and increase is a desire of all men, regardless the kind of people, regardless the geography, regardless the culture, regardless the civilization. There is no man who remains satisfied with delay, with retrogression, with a sense of limitation. We desire growth and advancement. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, it says the path of the just, Proverbs 4 and verse 18, the path of the just is as a shining light, the Bible says, that it shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. We've seen from three scriptures now that God intends and he desires for us to move forward. Prophesy to yourself and say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to move forward. I obtain grace to leave this current level spiritually, financially, career-wise, I decree and declare that my destiny is shifting by the Spirit to a higher dimension of grace. 
I think it was Sinach, the gospel artist from Nigeria here that sang a very prophetic song. She said, walking in abundance, it says moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Very powerful song, walking in abundance and then moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. But then there are a few principles that I want to share with us that are responsible for advancement. You see, believers desire to rise, we desire to excel in our lives, but the kingdom is systemic. We have to understand that intention and good desire is not enough. We must be equipped with the requisite level of spiritual information, the strategy, the methodologies of the kingdom that are responsible for growth and excelling. Otherwise, this would just remain a dream. It would remain a desire that may never manifest. The kingdom of God is systemic in its operation. That means that connecting every spiritual outcome, there are principles. Say principles. There are principles, the Bible calls them mysteries. So there are mysteries that connect to spiritual growth. There are mysteries that connect to wealth and abundance. There are mysteries that connect to longevity. There are mysteries that connect to influence. And our assignment is to, by the ministry of the fivefold, as the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 4, that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints. So that through platforms like this, we are able to bring the body of Christ, the body of believers into a higher level of spiritual enlightenment to not only know the possibilities that are there in this kingdom, but to connect them with the keys and the mysteries that drive them to those possibilities. I'll share a few within the time that we have and I want you to please pay attention. In fact, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Just speak over yourself and declare that your eyes are open. Your eyes are open to see. Your ears are open to hear. In the name of Jesus. The first that I'll be talking about this morning very quickly, the first kingdom key that controls advancement that is able to shift men from one dimension to the other is the power of vision the power of vision write it down please the power of vision what is vision a very clear picture of your next level a very clear picture a detailed picture of the next dimension of God's dealings in your life as revealed by the word as revealed to you by the spirit many people want to move forward in life but they do not have a vision visions are powerful they 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 help to construct your focus they give you a clear picture of where you are going to. You cannot excel in, in your spiritual life if you do not have an idea of where you are going. You cannot excel in business if you do not have an idea of where your company is going. The Bible says, when you read Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 11 and 12, uh, for time's sake we may not turn there, it says, what seest thou? And Jeremiah said, I see an almond tree, the shoot of an almond tree. And he says, you have seen correctly. And as a result of the clarity of your sight and the correctness of your sight, he says, I will hasten my word to perform it. So the hastening of the word is not just dependent on the ability of God. It's also dependent on the clarity, your ability to catch that vision. You will make progress and accelerate in your life, not just because God is with you alone, but that you are able to have a clear picture. I know where I am going. I know where I should be by November. I know where I should be by 2021. Sadly, our society is full of very sincere but visionless people who wallow around in all kinds of religious hopes. One day things will change, they will say. They will wait for circumstances and situations to predict the next outcome of their life. A, a wise man once said the greatest way to predict your future is to create it. 
you create it through knowledge. A very clear picture. Your vision must be broken into achievable goals. Write this down. Visions are powerful, but leaving it as a vision, I want to have a global ministry. I want to have a global business. I want to impact nations. I want to build a platform that is able to bless women and children, say. I want to build a brand. That's a wonderful vision, but that vision, as, as important as it is, it must be broken into goals. Goals. Achievable goals. Then further broken, those goals must be broken into daily tasks. You see, let me tell you something. One year is simply 365 days. One year is one day plus one day plus one day plus one week plus another week plus one month plus another month. So the unit of that long time span is your daily tasks if you are not effective in your daily tasks they will not accumulate to drive you into that desired end we wake up in the morning without any clear plan for the day and we do not know that every day wasted is a portion of a destiny wasted let me say it again Every day wasted is a portion of your destiny wasted because the unit of destiny is time. And for every one hour, one day that you waste, it is going to have a compounding effect on your destiny. It took vision to put this program, for instance, to place. In spite of the pandemic, in spite of the limitations that you know, direct fellowship would bring. It took a man of vision like your pastor to now create a very clear strategy to say the, the, the meeting, the conference would still happen. And that vision now was broken to goals. Getting all the speakers together, coordinating the logistics that will make this happen. You see, it, it, it's not just the intention of God and his desire to bless people alone. It, that, that vision had to come upon the life of an individual who is also a visionary. I pray it is my desire that God himself will cause us in this season to be men and women of vision. Not just to live our lives by happenstance, live our lives hoping that whatever would be, would be. So vision, vision is very, very important. If you do not have vision... You will not be able to achieve much in your life. The Bible says that without vision, the people perish. A version says the people cast off restraint. That means there is no focus. You do not have coordinates of discipline in your life. When you lack vision, you lack focus. When you lack vision, you lack the moral stance to say no to certain things. You see, if you are not... Vision gives you the justification to prune activities in your life. If you are not visionary, you will not have an excuse to remain focused. Because anything that wants to buy into your time and your life will have legitimate grounds to. But if you have a vision, the vision will give you a justification to say no to relationships, to say no to good things that may not be consistent with your destiny. Vision does not only prune evil, it prunes many good things that are not part of the requirements for your destiny. There are so many good things around our world today. The Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Praise the Lord. So let's go very quickly to the second, the second biblical principle that is responsible for advancement, that shifts people to the next level of their life. The power of faith. The power of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Very, very powerful. Faith. Why do we need faith? 
We need faith because we are dealing with realities that are largely unseen. We are dealing with realities that at the time we desire them, they are not yet manifest. And then this kingdom operates by faith. The Bible tells us very clearly that through faith, we understand, Hebrews 11 and verse 3, that the walls were framed by the word of God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Repeat it after me, please. The just shall live by faith. That means if you do not understand the dynamics of faith, you will not be able to live effectively. No matter how well-meaning you are, you will need to understand faith. Very, very important. Numbers chapter 23, please, and verse 19. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Let me turn very quickly there. The Bible gives us a very instructive revelation about God. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. Here's what it says. God is not a man. Wow, powerful. It is true that God is not a man. Listen, listen, listen. I know some of you already say, no, 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 no. But the Bible talks about God being a man. God is not a man. God only became a man. God is not a man. He became a man as a demonstration of his love, a demonstration of his passion to redeem man. But God is not a man that he should lie. A lie means a quality of vacillation, a quality of inaccuracy in truth. And the Bible says that God does not have that propensity. He cannot lie. He is ever true. In fact, Revelation calls him faithful and true. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Hallelujah. This is so powerful. The Bible is giving you a very powerful information about God. That God is not a man, so he does not lie. That if he says it, he is able to do it. If he speaks it, he is able to make it good. We live in a world where people may be sincere but they may not have the ability to make that which they intend to come to pass concerning their lives and your own life and the bible says god is not like that if he speaks a thing he has the power to bring it to pass in fact hebrews chapter 6 hebrews chapter 6 turn there very quickly and then i'll talk a bit on faith hebrews chapter 6 from verse 15 Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. I trust that you're getting blessed. 6 and verse 15. It says, And so, talking about Abraham now, it says, After he had patiently endured, the man of faith now, in fact, let me start from verse 13. For when God made a promise to Abraham, listen carefully, because he could not swear by any greater, he swore by himself, saying, saying, God is not committed to what he has not said. Saying, surely, blessing, in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, verse 15, after he had patiently endured, he finally obtained the promise. What is faith? Let me define faith for you because I think that that's where a lot of people have um, our definition of faith is why so many people do not walk in Bible faith. Faith is more than believing. Faith is more than just a mental ascent. Faith is more than agreeing that a thing can be possible. Faith, I define faith as the name given to the action you take. Please pay attention. The name given to the action you take. Actions of obedience now. 
based on your revelation of who God is and the integrity of his word. One more time. Faith is the name given to the action that you take based on the revelation of who God is and then the integrity of his person. This is very powerful. So faith is predicated on revelation, action. If you believe or you claim you believe and eventually there is no action of obedience, you are not manifesting faith. Please listen, let me your attention now as I share with you what I believe is a true picture of Bible faith. I've taken out time to study this myself from scripture and I've taken out time to learn at the feet of people who are veterans of faith with proof in their lives. And I can tell you I know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Now, faith, listen carefully. The foundation of true Bible faith is revelation. You cannot have faith without revelation and you cannot act on nothing you are acting on the word you are acting on an instruction and so it starts with revelation but not every revelation imparts faith listen there are two dimensions of god that are responsible for imparting faith number one his ability the consciousness of the ability of God imparts faith in the believer that God is able. God is able. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. It says, now unto him who is able. It is important that you meditate on the ability of God. How big is this God? How powerful is this God? How mighty is this God? Because your revelation of his might and his ability will determine how far you can believe him. When we doubt God, our doubt is simply our confidence in the fact that we think God is limited. Something about our not believing he is almighty. I always give a very humorous example for those watching our London family and then generally our global family. If, um, if I told you I were going to give you, I would give you 10,000 pounds or 10,000 euros. The first thing you would have to do is not to take my word for it. You have to examine me. Does he have that capacity to produce 10,000 pounds or 10,000 euros? So you may need to search around. You may need to ask for those who know me. You may need to find out who I promised some money. Did I fulfill it? You see, so the Bible, this Bible is a manifesto of God's credibility attesting to the fact that he is able. He is able. The songwriter says he is able. I'd like you to prophesy, speak over your life that God is able. He is able to lift me. He is able to bless me. He is able to multiply my influence. Listen, if you do not believe in the ability of God, you will never walk in power. You will never watch yourself move forward because the situations and circumstances that stand before us can be intimidating. Goliath always looks intimidating. So it takes faith. I believe God. There is nothing he tells me that I do not believe. There is nothing I find out from scripture that I do not believe. God is able. God is able. Turn it into a prayer in one minute. God, you are able. I kill the voice of doubt and fear and limitation and intimidation. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit that God is able. God is able to lift. God is able to clear the bills. God is able to heal. God is able to lift. God is able to open doors. Yes, he is. If he's unable to do this, then he is not God. You see, when Moses met him, when Moses met the God of the Bible in the wilderness, he was about to send Moses to go to this wizard called Pharaoh. Moses said, no, 
I, I, I know the kind of training that man went through. I'm not just going to stand with a staff and tell him some deity appeared in the bush and say and, 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 and mandated that he would come and advocate an exodus. And he said, if I go before Pharaoh, who should I tell Pharaoh had sent me? This is a question you must answer. Life will ask you who sent you. Who gave you the audacity to believe that even through the pandemic you will rise? Who gave you the audacity to believe that even though it looks like everyone is not there to help you, you can still rise? Who gave you the audacity? There is an audacity that the revelation of God's ability imparts upon the believer. This is true Bible faith. And God told him, go and tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline